2021. My name is Grace Ginting. Today I will be the moderator for this workshop session and the session will be very interactive and we highly encourage you to be active during this session. And before I start, please turn on the camera since the attendance will be monitored through your the screen's appearance. For the session, we have two PIC. There are Samira and Kanya. If there is any problem, you may communicate it to the PIC one, Samira. And now we are going to have a workshop session with a title, New Centara Culinary Chicken Curry. will be delivered by Larissa Amelinda. Uh, in sum up, this session will show one Indonesia's cultural resource in the culinary world. And the food that will be demonstrated in the session is Indonesian chicken curry. The demonstration will provide tutorials ranging from showing all the ingredients and how to process the ingredients into a delicious chicken curry. Hopefully, after this summer course, participants can try to make Indonesian chicken curry at their home. Before I start the session, I will read Larissa's CV and operator. Please share the screen. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, thank you, Kanya, for sharing the screen. Larissa Melinda Soriana, last year student of Universitas Diponegoro, majoring in international relations, who is her working passionate and honest. Previous education, Sampaka uh, Tree Tungal Immersion Program, and Sampaka Tree Tungal, and Hubungan International Universitas Diponegoro. Experience. Larissa is Miss Indonesia Third Runner of Miss Indonesia 2020, Miss Indonesia Jambi 2020, and in business field, uh, mid up 2016, Larissa Studio 2018 till 2019, and now Hell of uh, Smorang 2020 until now. Survive singer for Third Survive uh, 2000 uh, 2015 till now, and speaker. GKI Karang Saru Baja, 2020, Student Exchange as a Global Volunteer to Korea, 2018 to 2019. Skill and qualification, fluent in English, beginner in singing and videography, intermediate in photography and breaking, and able to operate Microsoft Word and many more. Awards and honors, a representative of Three Tungles Best Football Team, won several championships to 2000. 12 and till 2015. Highest national exam grade 2018 and third runner of Miss Indonesia for the latest. And students, uh, we will uh, we will provide the receipt from Larissa. Uh, may operator share the screen. Operator. Um, I will read it uh, without a uh, presentation, maybe, and I will continue. Uh, chicken curry, the recipe are okay. Chicken curry recipe. Thank you, operator. Uh, next slide. Okay, and protein, six to eight pieces of chicken, three eggs, tofu, and dry ingredients. More or less nine gram ginger, more or less nine lime leaf, and less uh, 23 gram jonial and three bell leaf, one lemon gray stems, and additional ingredients are 65 million, no, I'm sorry. 65 uh, milliliter coconut milk, one liter of water, chicken stock powder to taste, sugar to taste, wet pepper to taste, and MSG optional, and blended ingredients, eight cloves of garlic and seven shallots, more or less than a gram of turmeric, and a lot of candle nut. Okay, and uh, without any further ado, 
I invite Larissa to share knowledge and insights about mesenteric culinary, chicken curry. Larissa, the time and screen is yours. Hi, everyone. How is it on? Is my mic on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you, Larissa. Hi, everyone. So my name is Larissa Melinda. As my friend has introduced me before, I am in my last year studying in Universitas Diponegoro, majoring in international relations. And here I am today gonna show you how to make a chicken curry. So as you know, there are so many kinds of chicken curry. There are Indian, Japanese, and then Malaysian, and of course, Indonesian. And today I'm gonna teach you how to make our traditional chicken curry, which is Indonesian one. So what's the difference between those types of chicken curry? Actually, Indonesian chicken curry is probably one of the easiest and it's still very tasty compared to the other one. So uh, Indonesian chicken curry use less herbs, but actually it takes longer time to cook to, you know, to give them time, the chicken for the chicken and the tofu and the egg to absorb the air. So I'm gonna show you the ingredients that I'll be using. Uh, I have here a candle mat, cloves of garlic, shallot, turmeric, and I separate this one from this one. This one are ginger and also galangal, roll, lemongrass stem, bay leaf, lime leaf, and also coconut milk. I separate this one uh, between this one and this one because this one should be blended first. And we're just gonna have to stir this one flavor. So we're going to need to blend four of this ingredients and I've blended them in advance. I'm just going to have to turn on the stove. So we're going to have to censor them until they're cooked. You have to make sure not to undercook them. Because this blended ingredient is the foundation of the dish. So it has to be fully cooked because if not, it's gonna taste strange and just it will be as tasty as it's supposed to be. We'll, we'll have to wait for the oil to be a little hot first. So, before we have to blend this four ingredients, I, um, I advise you to add a little water just to make the blender shop easier. So the, the ingredients would be blended smoother and easier, or you can also add oil instead of water. But we are use oil here, so I don't want it to be over oily. So I just use water to blend those ingredients. Wait, my top is, oh, I need to bring it on. Okay. We're gonna have to wait for the oil to be a little hot. And do you know actually the difference between those curries, those type of curries, actually probably Indian is the hardest because they use a lot more herbs such as cardamom, coriander, you know, a lot of more herbs than what we use to make Indonesian curry. So my oil is starting to be hot, I'm just gonna 
put my flooded ingredients in. We're just gonna have to wait. While we wait for this, I'm gonna take my lemongrass jam and crush it with my knife and put it in the in my pan and also the galangal gel and the ginger. We do this in Indonesia. Well, I think it's just to make the earth to, you know, to make the aroma and the flavor to come out more. And for the leaves, I'm just gonna take it. We're gonna have to Consider them together. I feel like at first, actually, your blended ingredients would smell a little strange. So you have to wait for a few minutes to actually wait for them to reduce and to try them out. So you know when the time is right to start adding your chicken is when your blended ingredients started to give that aroma of that best aroma. It's so gonna be, it smells great and you're gonna know it. It usually takes about, for about 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes for the blended ingredients to be cooked. It, you, it actually depends on your stove. If you have the big stove, the one that usually restaurants use, it's gonna take a shorter time, but here I'm only using a small stove, so it's, it's gonna take me a longer time for my blended ingredients to be cooked. It's starting to give that good aroma, but it's not done yet. We're gonna have to wait a little longer for it to dry it out. And also for it to reduce. So actually making chicken curry, Indonesian chicken curry is not that hard. The method is actually easy, but what's hard is that you have to, you know, get all the herbs because it's not little, it's so variated, but it's gonna give you that very tasty result later. You know, there are a lot of uh, variation of chicken curry from Indonesia itself. We have one that is from Central Java, we have one that is from Padang. And the one I'm making is the one originated from Central Java. It's gonna be lighter than the one from Padang. The one from Padang, the yellow soup, it's gotta be like for the, for the sauce of the chicken. But the one from Central Java, it's actually gonna be kind of like soup. So you can actually eat it together. So I'm, when it started to be so, so aromatic, I'm gonna put in my chicken. I used around six to eight chicken here. And just stir them until the ingredients and my yellow sauce here blend it together with the chicken. We're gonna have to wait a little for the chicken to be cooked here. Not until they're fully cooked, just until they're changing in color. I'm also gonna put in my egg and tofu. I'm gonna put in my egg first. 
I'm going to cut my tofu into smaller pieces because I feel like it's too big. People in Indonesia usually also add tempe. You can definitely add whatever you want into your chicken curry, but here I'm only using tofu and chicken and egg because I feel like that's kind of the OG kind of Indonesian Central Java chicken curry. We're gonna have to mix them a little bit. This way it gives more time for the chicken to absorb the sauce first before adding water to it. It smells so great in here. Just please make sure you don't undergo the foundation or the yellow sauce base because it, if you undercook it, it'll give a lot of huge impact on the final result. That's a very important thing. And here I'm using around a liter of water. I'm going to open it. Two bottles consist of around a hundred, a thousand and a thousand hundred of water. I'm not going to use all of them. I'm just going to use one half just to keep the 100 milliliter of the water bottle. This part takes the longest because you're going to have to wait for it to boil. You may see that I am not seasoning any of it yet with maybe chicken stock, sugar, or white pepper because in dishes like this, you have to wait for the sauce to be reduced first. So you season it later when you're done, when you're satisfied with the texture of your soup, and you're gonna start seasoning it. Because when you season it now, uh, later when you get the texture that you want, uh, it'll be too salty. So you'll have to wait until you're satisfied and you reach the texture of the soup that you wanted. We also have here the coconut milk, but I'm going to use it later when it boils for the first time. So there are two steps. For the first one, you'll have to wait for this one to boil first. It's gonna have, it's gonna have to boil for the first time and then you add the coconut milk. And then when you add the coconut milk, you have to wait for it to boil the second time so that it'll give the curry time to absorb and just to get blended together with the coconut milk. And also for those of you who are maybe not from Indonesia, which probably is not as easy for us to get coconut milk, you can actually use another type of milk, such as, you know, recording in progress, regular, regular milk from, or oat milk. It'll definitely give a different taste but you can still use it. it. It can be an alternative to help you make a chicken curry. But I am advising you, if you can, if it's, and if it is possible, you should use the one that is coconut milk because it gives a tastier taste. It gives a little hint of saltiness. And I just think it's best to use this kind of milk. But it again, it's still okay to use another type of milk. It's going to take uh, around probably 10 to 15 minutes. So if any one of you want to add something, I'll be open to that while we are while we wait for the chicken curry to reduce. Uh, students, if you have any question, 
uh, you may uh, chat on the text uh, in the gym or you can ask directly to Larissa. And if there's no question, I'll get back to explaining another thing about our chicken curry. But if you have any question, you can just write it down. So the amount of the coconut milk and the water is definitely up to you. You can adjust it to your liking. I use here only 65 milliliter of coconut milk because I want it to be light and just you can clean the soup. I don't want it to be very creamy, but if you want it to be more creamy or you want it to be like the one from Padang, you can definitely use more coconut milk and less water. And also you, it will take you more time for the soup to reduce. But the one from Padang is definitely, definitely way tastier, but also it takes more time. So you choose which one you want to try or the one you're craving for that that time. Smells so good in here. I feel like the bay leaf and the lime leaf really gives that extra kick towards the dish. So you really can miss the leaf part and also the lemon crisp. Um, you really can skip that part. Maybe if you don't have, or it's so hard for you to find turmeric, you can actually skip the turmeric. It's just gonna be slightly different, such as it's not gonna be a yellow curry. It's gonna be a white curry. We usually use uh, eat it with gudeg. Gudeg is also one of Indonesian traditional food, originated from Yogyakarta. And it's gonna be that kind of curry when you skip the turmeric part. But if you can find turmeric, then it's gonna be this yellow sauce curry. So there are actually so, so many types of curry that you can make. Uh, Larissa, maybe you can share your uh, stories or when do you have a passion for cooking? Oh, actually, maybe some of you might wonder why is the student teaching me how to cook chicken curry or you don't, but I'm just gonna explain anyway why. So my parents happen to own an Indonesian restaurant since around 10 years ago actually more than 10 years, but I don't remember exactly the exact number, I don't remember. And it specializes on serving uh, traditional Indonesian fried chicken, Indonesian traditional uh, spicy sauce, or what we usually call sambal. And sometimes we also accept custom requests. So this uh, the customer sometimes can request whatever they want to order. And sometimes they order this chicken curry. And it became people's favorite. So here I am teaching you how. And recently, me and my brother is the one running for the business. So we kind of have to learn also about how to cook. And that is how I found my patient. And also I am... Uh, I own a, an online bakery, and that is how I actually found the love I have for cooking and also baking. Such a great story from Larissa, and maybe anyone can ask Larissa about uh, the story or maybe uh, what is uh, the different um, method to cook uh, in traditional culinary?
Anyway, my car is starting to boil. It's starting to show that little bubbles, but it's not fully cooked yet. Or Larissa, uh, do you have any difficulties to cook the traditional culinary? Yes, definitely. Indonesian uh, traditional culinary definitely needs more herbs than, I might say, Western food. We need more herbs to create the taste that we wanted or that we want to achieve. But actually, since it's Indonesian traditional food, you can actually easily find a very good Indonesian cook. So it's actually not that hard to, you know, cre create a business in this industry. You just have to find the foundation that you want and to keep the consistency. It's definitely hard at first, but once you get to it, Indonesian culinary is definitely worth, worth all the hard work and the hardship you have to go to. And uh, we have another question and uh, because the participants can ask uh, through this uh, Zoom. Um, other than chicken curry, what are the Indonesian food that you can cook and you can show to other? Well, for now, I mean, at this right point of time, I can't show you anything because I don't have the ingredients, but I, on my daily basis, I can actually show you how to cook Indonesian fried chicken, Indonesian sambal, rendang, I once cooked rendang as well. For a summer course like this, I showed the participants how to cook rendang and also Indonesian fries, which are um, what we call bakwan, so many kind of Indonesian fries. And now my obor is starting to boil. I'm gonna pour in my coconut milk. And give it a stir. And wait until it boils for the second time. And here I've prepared a fried shallot. In Indonesia, we usually fry shallots like this. We cut it thinly and then fry them on a lot of oil. It's actually very oily, but Indonesian food are the best, even though they're oily. Oh yeah, in here, you can actually add MSG. MSG, I wrote MSG as optional because I know not everyone eats MSG, but you know, in Indonesia, we use them a lot. So I'm just gonna keep option using them. Once it boils for the second time, I'm gonna start adding the seasoning. I'm gonna add the chicken powder, chicken stock powder. I use a lot of them because I want them to have a lot of soup with every lighter. And all the amount of the seasoning is definitely you can adjust it to your liking. I use a lot of sugar because I like my savory dish to be a little sweet. And I know not everyone likes it that way. So you can definitely adjust it to your liking. It's almost done because I don't want my chicken curry to be too creamy or too thick. 
so I don't really wait for them or cook them for the cook them for a longer time. And also add white pepper. Chicken curry is actually a very versatile dish. We eat them almost in every special occasion that we have. In Lebanon holiday, we usually eat them. But also in Chinese New Year holiday, we also eat them. So this is a very, very versatile dish. Larissa, we have one question from Rahmadina. Hey, Miss Larissa, I would like to raise a question. Hi. Do you have any replacement for coconut milk? Since I don't like coconut milk. Okay, so the replacement is what I have mentioned before, which is just the regular milk or any kind of milk that you can find at the store. Mm, so good. Wait, I need more white pepper. And we're going to wait for a little longer for it to boil. The third time, and when it's boil, boil for the third time, I'm going to add the fried shallot I showed you earlier. And for the replacement of the coconut milk, you can use regular milk or just any kind of milk that you like, but it'll definitely give a slight different kind of taste to the one I'm making or showing you today. But it can definitely be an alternate alternative. It won't give such a huge difference, but milk should be in the dish. So you can actually just substitute it with any kind of milk instead of just getting it, not using it. So as you can see, it started to boil again. I'm going to add my fried shallot. I'm not going to use all of them because I also like to um, just add them at the end. It definitely gives texture of the crunchiness of the fried shallot. But if you cook it now as it's still cooking, it will give it more taste, just give it more depth of taste, not only just savory, uh, sweet, but also that I feel like it gives the new mommy taste. But if you don't have it, it's totally okay too. It's just, I feel like it gives extra cake to the dish. Yuta, you raise the hat. Okay. You yeah. can ask the question. Hello. Can you hear my voice? Yes, we can hear your voice. Okay, just uh, Miss Suryana, you said before that uh, we eat something uh, like this in Chinese New Year. Uh, by that, do you mean it is a uh, lontong chap gome? Yes, that's true. Oh, we I usually just add that soy powder. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, the, diff the difference, we usually add soy, soy powder when we eat it during the Chinese New Year holiday. And we don't usually add that soy powder when we eat it during the Lebanon holiday. So it doesn't have that much of a difference. It's just that I feel like for the Chinese New Year holiday, you have more condiments to it. It has a lot more condiments than the one we use, than the one we eat in Lebanon holiday. In Lebanon, we usually eat it with lontong, sambal goreng. What is sambal goreng? chili, fried chili paste, and then also just usually that kind, right? But in Chinese here, you add a lot more condiments. Uh, I have one more question for you. Uh, for the sure. chicken, uh, do you prefer the what? We call it kampung and broiler chicken. What do you prefer it is? is it for well, the to be honest, that depends on the time you have to make the dish. So if you have a lot of time, I prefer to use kampung chicken, but you need to press 
press cook them to make them soft. But if you don't have much time, I advise you to just use the regular boiler chicken as it takes shorter time to you know make them soft. But Taiwan chicken is definitely a very, very good choice. It just takes longer time to cook. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. And Romadina, give your feedback from your insurer, Larissa. And thanks for the insurer. How do we supposed to create this food if we are Frisians? Do you have any advices? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, thanks for the answer. How do we supposed to create this food if we are vegans? Do you have any advice? You can can vegan eat egg? No. So you just eat it with tofu, tempeh, and other types of curry. For example, in the Japanese curry, you also add. Uh, potato and also carrot. So you can definitely just add or use whatever ingredient you want because the basic herb, I feel like they're vegan already, but it's just the choice of meat or the thing you cook in here is definitely up to you. You can use tempeh, tofu. Tempeh and tofu is definitely my favorite. And also you can add potato. Potato is definitely a good choice. And uh, Rahmadinda, is that clear? I also uh, like tofu and tempeh, and it was my favorite too. <laughs> and yeah. another question yeah. from Pradyuktia. Mm, good afternoon, Ms. Larissa. My name is Pradyuktia. Bagas Aikruniawan from Universitas Diponegoro. I would like to raise a question. I would like, uh, if we don't have chicken at home, can we substitute it with other ingredients like egg or vegetables? Will it affect the taste of the food? Thank you. Yes, you can definitely substitute it with anything that you have at home. Actually, if you're asking about really change the taste of the soup, it won't because the taste of the soup is all based on the herbs that we used earlier. But uh, there's just different kind of texture because it, with chicken, we, we kind of get that soft, chewy texture, but if you use vegetable, you're gonna have, you're gonna get that crunchy and just, or if you wanna cook it, very long, it's gonna be a very soft, no chewy or just soft, that texture that we get from the chicken. So actually it's all just, the different is only on the texture, I feel like. The different is only there. And in the soup, there won't be much different. And my opor is spoiling for the third time. I'm gonna turn off my stove because I want it to be light. I don't want it to cook it, cook it for much longer. And I'll add my remaining fried shallot on top of it. So this is the final result of my dish. You can see all the chicken. Is my phone is thin? Can you see the final yeah. result? We can okay. see. So as you can see here, all the chicken, the tofu, and then the eggs all are coated beautifully with the yellow sauce because at first we don't just directly add water and coconut milk to the dish. We kind of wait for the chicken and the egg and the tofu to mix and blend well together with the sauce first. You can see with the short amount of time that I did, it still coats the protein we have here beautifully. Of course, if you wanna make it creamier, you just simply add co more coconut milk. Or if you wanna make it stronger in taste, you can just add more herbs and seasoning, or you can just cook it a little longer. 
then it will reduce more. And here I'm gonna put my dish on a plate that I've prepared. One egg, and then I'm gonna get the Thai part. I'm toasting. I'm adding the soup. That's it. I'm gonna have to grab the plate just so it'll be clear. And here it is. My Indonesian chicken curry. It's so so hot. And it smells so 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 good and so fragrant, so aromatic. And that's it for today. Do you want me to try it? I'm gonna give it a little try. It's so good. Oh it's so good. Even though I cook it in a very short amount of time, it still tastes good because I chose the easiest kind of curry that you can easily make at home at a short period of time. So you can copy it easily. Mm. So good. And a question regarding the curry that I just made, or just about anything else that you want to Marissa, ask? do you, uh, I feel hungry after see this dish, <laughs> and um, that is the purpose. <laughs> and um, there's such a great uh, demonstration uh, demonstration from Larissa, and Larissa, we have yeah a lot of question here. Sure. Um, from Ataya. Hi, good afternoon, Miss Larissa. I want to ask okay. a question. Are there any tips for us who want to learn how to cook Indonesia food? Because we all know that Indonesian food have a high level of difficulty. So, my advice is that first you should try, because at first I thought it was so hard too because we use a lot of herbs and it takes a long a very long time but once you start doing your first one it's gonna get easier by time and also i think the difficulty is only on the time you have to you know collect all the herbs because that's it's not easy because uh for indonesian food we really use a lot of herbs and that is, I think, is the only difficult part of cooking Indonesian food. It's actually collecting and, you know, just having all the herbs that the recipe asks you to. You don't actually, you don't usually have them at home, for example, right? But if you want to start, just, you know, start your first ever dish. And by that, it's not going to be that hard. I feel like Indonesian food is... Not that hard, you just have to start. Athea? Okay, thank you, Miss Clarissa, for the answer. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Athea, for the question. And uh, so, so me, or is uh, the question directly and you can turn on the mic? So, Sadita, or you have any problem? About it? Uh, uh, 
No, actually, can swallow us the question directly here. So, uh, good afternoon, Miss Larissa. My name is Asadi Good afternoon. From Manifesto Stephanogoro. I want to ask, uh, what is uh, the difference if we use instant curry powder instead of the homemade curry ingredient? Okay, so actually there are a lot now, the instant powder that we can find anywhere near our house. And it's definitely, definitely easier. Uh, I feel like the one you use real herbs, it's gonna give you more kicks. I feel like it gives you more fragrance. It gives you more of that tastiness of the authentic Indonesian food. But I might say that the one that we can find easily at, for example, our nearest mini market or supermarket, it's not that bad too. You just have to, you know, sometimes a little bit when the packaging says at a thousand milliliter of milk, don't add a thousand because it definitely will give you that, you know, blend flavor, blend taste. You just have to, you know, read it a little. So it'll give you a very good taste too. But uh, I feel like the real or authentic way of making Indonesian food is still a better one. Because I feel like if the instant one is that good, then restaurant won't be using the authentic way. Okay, thank you, Ms. Marisa, for the answer. Thank you for the question. Thank you, Salsa, for the question. Um, Rania, you may ask uh, the question and directly. Rania? Okay, uh, I'll uh, write read the question from Rania. Miss Larissa, as also from your CV, you are also the owner of the High Love, which I have booked like three times. May I know how do you supposed to be so passionate about in cooking, baking, and for decorating? Could you please share it with us? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh my God, thank you, Rania, for my hey love. Okay, so actually, passion is actually my, the thing I found second. I found that since a very young age, I'm a very hard work, hardworking person. I tried several businesses from, since I was in high school. So actually, Halo, I started Halo where we just, I was so bored with the COVID stuff that we can go out and anything. So I just started baking at home. And then my sister asked me, my sister showed me this picture of Eclair. And I feel like this can be a hit in Semarang. So I did a trial and error. Actually, I didn't have any patient in baking before because I didn't have I didn't even have an oven at my house but I think I was that I have that hard working kind of person inside of me so I did trial and error of that eclair for about a month or more I made eclair every day until I reached uh, the one that I want and since then, I feel like every time I make one and then the customer says, thank you, it's so nice, customer giving good feedbacks, that is when I started to love baking. So actually, it's not that I have the passion first, but when I see people are happy with the creation that I make, it gives me the happiness and it gives me pushes to, you know, create better goods. And even though I didn't have any, you know, foundation on baking and then cooking, I feel like you can get everything online now. As long as you're that, you have the hard workingness inside of you that you want to learn, 
you can actually learn it. And sometimes passion is not something that you have even before you try it. For example, oh, I think I love my passion is in baking, so I want to start baking. I feel like passion is something that you find along the way. So my passion in cooking and baking and stuff like that, I found I found it along the way when I do them. By the way, thank you for buying him up. Thank you, Rania, so for the question. Uh, the last question, Meisha Anissa, do you have any tips for us who is still a beginner in learning how to cook? Or do you have YouTube channel recommendation for us? Indonesian YouTube channel is definitely Devina Hermawan and Wilkos. Devina Hermawan gives a very, very good recipe. I think she's very talented one. But I think when you want to, you know, pursue it more as a career, I really think you should try more than just one. For example, for my eclairs that I sell in Hela, I watched all YouTube videos showing me how to make eclairs. I watched all of them, every single one of them. I tried them all one by one until you finally understand the ingredients that you're working with. And until the point you can actually create your own recipe to the liking, to the taste that you like. I think you have that too. Stefana Hermawan in Wilgos is the recommendation that I have as for beginner. But if you want to pursue it more as a career, you have to study deeper than just to that two YouTubers. Okay, Misha, Anissa said thanks. You're welcome. And, oh, we have one question. Uh, Sopa Aurora, Miss Larissa, usually food that contains coconut milk gets stale easily. I have some tips of making it last longer? Yes, my tip is to wrap them and put it in the fridge and only take them out when you want to eat it. So you don't just take them out and then leave it there in room temperature for hours. But you take it from the fridge, take the portion that you're going to eat, and then you reheat it. And the rest that you still want to save it for later, you put it directly back into your fridge. So you don't put them long in a room temperature. You have to save it in your fridge to make them fresh longer. Um, okay, thank you, Larissa, for the answer. And we still have one question from Pinkan Kalidis. Hi, Miss Larissa, my name is Pinkan from Venus. I want to ask, after you graduate, you're, uh, are you planning to continue your business or are you planning to pursue a job related to international relations? Thank you. Thank you, Pinkan, for the question. And to Chafa, I hope it helps. And your name is famous now, Chafa. <laughs> okay, and to Pinkan, uh, I am definitely continue, continuing my um, business right now. It's the Salera Sambal that my parents built years ago. So unfortunately, my mom passed away a few months ago. So me and my brothers are the one in charge now. So we have to keep it running. And also, secondly, it's the Halo that I established a year ago. It's still going very good until now. I'm also, I, I found a passion here too, as I mentioned before, I now love to bake, I love to decorate, cake, decorate cakes, and I feel like that gives me peace and that keeps me calm, so I don't want to stop doing it. And also, third one, I am in love with fiction. So you may see I'm only wearing a black 
t-shirt and jeans here, but actually, guys, I love fashion. I love using a very good dress, but I am a very, I might say I'm a quite cheap person. I don't like dress that are very expensive. So I am currently also building an online shop clothing line that focuses on creating a high quality dresses but in a very affordable price. And it, it, hopefully it's gonna launch by the end of the year. So there are the three jobs that I'll be doing after I graduate. But I won't be close to any international relation opportunity. Who knows, I'm destined to go there too. Wow, you are very, very passionate in business. And yes. Larissa, um, maybe you can pursue your happiness. Also, uh, you pursue your uh, dream in international scope uh, through the international business, like what we have already learned. Amen. <laughs> and um, we are very thank uh, for you, uh, and that's such a nice demonstration from Larissa. And thank you so much. Larissa for all the insightful inspiration in cooking edition. And now it's time for us uh, to allow Larissa give a dollar statement or give an advice to us regarding to the cooking edition. Okay, so my advice is that to start because actually everything, nothing is so hard that you won't be able to do it. You just have to start and learn it little by little. Every great person wants an amateur too, but they want they are they were willing to start and look at them now. You never know where you might end up in the future. But if you start, you're one step closer to the future that one day might be distant for you. Same as cooking. You might not know that you're good at it if you don't start. So start cooking. Who knows you're going to have your career in cooking, in dishes, or in restaurants. So the point is to start. That's it. And uh, we have uh, the very, very kind of uh, Message uh, for you, Larissa. Hi, Miss Larissa. My name is Ihsan. I'm from the Ponogoro University. My mom stated that if you want to make a good food, you must have a good mood too. And you must make it with love. And that you do that too. Yes, definitely. Good mood um, gives you a better result. But if you want to pursue it as a career, it cannot be dependent on your mood, right? So there's this thing called scale. So you have to scale your ingredients one by one. So you, so even though you have a very bad mood, the result won't be much different if you scale the ingredients. Yes, mood definitely adds difference to your results, but if it's as a career, I feel like you have to be professional and sometimes there are bad days, but you still have to cook a good food. So you have to scale them and the alternative is to scale them. Yes, mood adds, but scaling is important. Scaling the ingredient is important. Ixan, thank you for the kind message to Larissa and um, Larissa. Um, we have in the end uh, of the session, you are in the end of the session. And before we end in the session, let's uh, have a capture and uh, a brother. May you- Larissa, uh, can we take pictures with your cooking? This one.
Okay, get ready, everyone. Uh, one, two, three. And one, two, three. Okay, once again, one, two, three. Okay, we have a lot. One, two, three. Okay, that's all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Larissa. Yeah, thank you for the honor. Thank yeah, you. thank you, Larissa. Thank you, Larissa. Thank you so much. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Grace, Kanya, Shem, for moderating this session. And thank you, Masatya, for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you, Larissa. Looks really delicious, and I would like to taste it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come to my house. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, let's make it a uh, promise. Yeah. Well, I'll come see you with Chris and I don't know. Sam is not here, so maybe Kanya if she's waiting. here. Yeah. I'll be waiting. Okay. Sir. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Larissa. Thank you, everyone. Hope you have a great time. I'm feeling okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm.